Welcome back, Sas23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and today I have for you the Sin Cut Knives Watuga. Watuga. <laughs> this knife came in at $47.60 at Blade Show where I picked it up, and unfortunately it's not out yet, but I was told that it should be coming out really soon, so definitely stay on the lookout for this one and along with another several uh, button locks as well. Let's get the specs out of the way so you know the uh, size of the knife. You have a total length of 8 inches, so it's a full-size EDC knife in that larger range. You have a blade length of 3.75, 8 inches. You have a grip area from here to here of 3.7 inches, or if you go choking up right here, you can go to 4.7 inches. You have a close width in the pocket from the widest port portions at 1.42 inches and a handle scale thickness right above average at 0.52 uh, really nice <coughs> you have a blade stock thickness of 0.118 inches and a behind the edge thickness at the thinnest portion back here around 15 thousandths and then thickens up to about 17 thousandths toward the tip just saying it's super slicey all right let's take a closer look at this you have a very nice worn cliff uh i think it's attractive blade right here nice top swedge uh, that gives it some full air up top got a nice needle like point right there for piercing and what I think this knife is excellent for is doing those utility style drag cut precision type cutting um, it, it just really really excels put your finger up there and you know get some pressure uh, down on the blade you have a black wash uh, stone wash finish on this one I think they do a good job it, it's held up pretty nicely through all the testing and uh, you have the Sin Cut logo here. Blade steel on this one is a D2. Sin Cut does a pretty good job with their D2 and their 9CR. Now D2 is not stainless, so that's why I went with the coated blade, so I don't have to worry about it here in Louisiana where it's super humid. You have dual blade fullers or just grooves on both sides. Um, they're, <laughs> they're nice and wide and fairly deep there. Not, um, they're not slick. You do have a row of jipping right here that offers a, a good bit of grip, which I was kind of surprised because it is coated, but um, it's they didn't round them over, and uh, if you like jimping, it definitely grabs a hold to the thumb. It's not uncomfortable, though. You have a nice dip right here that, I mean, when I say it's perfect when you, uh, when you choke back on the knife, very, very comfortable, very, very locked in, and <clears throat> you have a... Either, you could either call this a large sharpening choil or a uh, forward finger choil depending on the size of your fingers. My fingers fit just fine, but if you have fat sausage fingers, it's definitely going to be too small for you. Uh, you have a nice high flat grind on this, and it comes down to a nice slicey edge. Why don't we put this to the test and see how well this knife performs. We get started on this cardboard and right away I realized that the knife was extremely sharp uh, from the factory which is really nice to see especially if you don't know how to sharpen or you don't like to sharpen a knife. It was blazing through the cardboard effortlessly and it felt very very good in the hand that my carda is nice and comfortable and I felt locked in throughout the entire process. Uh, we come back over to the wood and here I'm just testing the ergos uh, by putting you know pressure into this wood cut and I'm also checking that edge and the edge was biting very well slicing really well uh, I was able to make some deep cuts along with those fine curly cues and no hot spots whatsoever very very comfortable very locked in in that hammer grip and that was that was the most comfortable even though you're a good bit further away from the edge because it has almost a full forward finger choil but i had no problems with myself uh getting into that choil at least i didn't notice it but i was showing you how deep uh i was getting those cuts very very nice always nice to see now I'm just cutting some nylon strapping and it did not take much pressure to push through that. Uh, once again, that edge is still a nice and sharp. This is right, right here is probably, you know, what this knife is gonna excel at is those drag cuts with that tip being it's a Warncliffe blade. And uh, it performed outstanding because that tip up there is very thin to the geometry. Uh, this thick leather was no challenge. 
I did put it up on this block because it is a flat edge on a flat surface so I just raised it up so I could get the entire cutting edge on it but I cut several pieces of this because it was going through it like a hot knife through butter um, did find here I was hitting that tip into the board to the uh, wood table right there but it was an issue I had to pull it back up on the block and it didn't struggle through this it, it was just that this denim that stretchy denim so it was spreading across the block and making it just a little bit harder to get all the way uh, through the entire piece of the denim um, it, it was still nice and sharp and it'll it'll be evident once we get into the uh, rope cutting in just a second the sisal rope and after that first cut I was very very impressed because not only was the knife sharp it had a good bit of bite to it which a lot of knives don't come from factory with any bite to them any toothiness this one was blazing through the uh, rope I, I, I pulled it to the edge of my table so I could get you know as much of the cutting surface there without coming in contact with my knuckles instead of putting it up on the block it's a little bit more stable here uh, it's remaining sharp for a very very long time and I made 40 cuts before it started to kind of slow down and then right at around 50 cuts is where I stopped it because the edge kind of fell off at that 50th cut but I did a lot of cutting with this and a budget knife I think that's more than acceptable at least for me it is well, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. It was very enjoyable because of that incredible edge it came with. It's not that often where you get a nice screaming sharp edge that also has some bite to it, and this one definitely did. Uh, let's check out the deployment. You have two deployment methods on this knife. First, you have this somewhat minimal flipper tab that's nice and rounded over and it has some fine cut jimping on there that grips the finger nicely it's not uncomfortable and uh, you can do the the pullback light switch that fires out nice and hard very very snappy and if you want you can uh, to get that jimping on the top and do yourself a load up push button on there comes out just as hard both ways it's riding on ceramic bearings and that uh, action on the close is very very fall shut no uh, no friction once you disengage that button lock very very nice there uh, your second deployment mo uh, option is the blade grooves or fullers whatever you want to call them you can get your thumb in there and do a flick or you can do a nice slow roll or if you would like you can do a reverse flick because like I said you have enough to put your finger in there I like when they do that size uh, whenever they do small ones it makes it a lot harder to do deployments with it let's close it up and check out the scales you have uh, micarta scales that are flatly ground as you can see there you do have a nice deep chamfer that goes all the way around that makes it nice and comfortable in hand um, the finish on the, this micarta is the rougher finish which I think it feels nice and soft and very very grippy listen to this very very grippy that's one reason why i love micarta whenever your hands get wet it gets even grippier um just a nice material and it will darken over time i'm not sure if this is that uh, the grayish black which they call black or the green it's hard to tell especially in this lighting kind of looks green on the sides but then the top looks more gray um, i like it it's an improvement uh, from what they used to use you have all black hardware on this one that matches the blade uh, even your button there you have t8 on the pivot t8 on the body screws and you have t6 on the pocket clip screws which there would have been t8 but I'm fine with that uh, you do have a deep carry pocket clip that is tip up uh, right-handed or a left-handed as you can see it's got the hole tapped right there uh, pocket clip was comfortable in hand I did not feel it whatsoever it goes in and out of the pocket really nicely let's check it out in the pocket they have just enough lip right there that goes in nicely um, and that micarta kind of gives it some grip so it doesn't slide out of the pocket now it is kind of wide in the pocket it takes up you know a good bit of room you could you could probably fit something else in there if you would like I usually have dedicated uh, knife pockets so <laughs> um, 
the retention's good, comes out really well. Let's flip it over. You have uh, flow through construction with two hourglass standoffs in the back and a hidden lanyard post. Love seeing that. Uh, they have internal milling, and I'll try to shed some light on that for y'all. There you go. Very, very heav heavily milled on the inside to save on weight, and they did a good job. Also, the uh, liners have been coated black as well and they are they don't sit proud they sit flush with the uh the micarta so you don't have to worry about anything pinching you and there's no sharp edges on it they did a good job of rounding over everything let's see how much it weighs after they skeletonized this as much as they did first in grams 96.4 grams and 3.4 ounces i think that's more than acceptable all right, let's check out that lock. You have a very solid lockup. Absolutely no plate in any direction. Uh, your, the lock is recessed. As you can see, you have a nice little recessed spot. So you're not going to disengage that accidentally. Uh, you can see it sits below the surface in the closed position as well. Well, no, and then it, uh, it, it sits proud in the open position so you can get to that lock. Uh, but you do have to depress it underneath that uh, scale to make the blade uh, disengage. My lock does have a little bit of lock stick. I'll see if you can hear it. But uh, definitely doesn't bother me enough that, you know, I, I, it's a, you know, no go for me. But definitely it's there. Uh, I've noticed that a lot of the coated blades from Civivi and Sincut tend to have them. But, I mean, my, my much more expensive coated Protec has button lock stick as well. So, it's not an issue for me. Now, if, if I couldn't, you know, disengage it or, you know, it was hurting really bad to try to disengage, then that would be a no-go for me. But, as it sits, I know that it's locked up. It gives me a little bit of assurance and um, it's nothing, you know, nothing that's wearing my thumb out. Even though I'm not a huge fan of button locks, I'll be honest. Quick size comparisons, we've got the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Rat Model 2. I'd say it's closer to the Rat Model 1 in overall length. You got the Kaiser Sheepdog and the Sincut Honoris. The Sheepdog's a little bit shorter, not by much, and so is the Sincut Honoris. When I first saw this knife, it really reminded me of the CH Knives Nighthawk. Uh, the Nighthawk's a little bit longer. And then we have at the bottom right here, the Civivi Chevalier, which is just a hair shorter than the Sin Cut. Um, but those are good size comparisons as well. All right, for my nitpicks and complaints, uh, it would have been nice if they would have extended this a little bit or brought it back a little bit. Um, you know, I think it would have been an excellent forward finger choil, but it's kind of small, even for my hands. Uh, for that forward finger chawl and it's kind of large for the sharpening chawl but I do like the fact that I'm not going to widen this edge up whenever I sharpen it next um, and being that even though it's not something that bothers me it, it is a little nitpick uh, the mild button stick like I said it seems to be more common with these coated blades but the non-coated has it as well definitely gives you assurance that the knife is locked up and I say this all the time and hopefully one day they'll start doing it I wish I would start insetting these clips into the micarta or whatever the scale material is just because it always leaves a chance for material to hit that lip. They're already countersinking the screws. I think it would just be a nice extra step right there. Uh, I kind of understand it on the Sin Cut models, but I really wish they would start doing it on uh, their Civivi models as well, like the Chevalier. Um, <laughs> and that's about it. The, the nitpicks. Look at that excellent, uh, that excellent blade to handle ratio and you're not able to come in contact with that tip. So that's awesome. So what are my final thoughts? I was super, super impressed with Sincut, the Sincut line this year at Blade Show, more so than the Civivi line. I found that the button locks that they brought out in the Sincut line were on point. Very nice snappy actions and very smooth. This one was no, no exception. Um... I highly, highly recommend this knife, the Watuga, when it comes out. Very, very enjoyable knife to use. Comfortable in hand. Very snappy action. Uh, comf uh, like I said, once again, comfortable. Locked in with this nice little scoop. Nice and slicey thin blade. Uh, my Carta scales are very, very... Uh, grippy and 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 the the whole knife itself is nice and lightweight 
Uh, values definitely definitely there. As long as they keep it in that $47, $48, $49 range, I think it's an incredible buy. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.